All right, good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for coming. I like to be a good steward of everybody's time. Um, for those that are here on time, the rest can catch up. Uh, my name is Christy Drenner. I'm the Director of Connectional Resources, Treasurer and Chief Benefits Officer for the conference. And I am joined by the amazing Tracy Everson, who is really the brains behind this operation of property insurance that we do. So uh, she will be here monitoring the chat. Um, make sure that you do have the chat box open. She'll be putting important information in there. All of our resources are available on our website um, uh, about property insurance. But if you have questions as we go through the presentation, um, make sure to drop them. I'll stop at different times to answer questions. Um, we are very glad that you came tonight there. As I always say, with, as I start almost every Zoom call, there are more exciting things to do in ministry, but this work is so vitally important. So I'm going to go ahead and open us with a word of prayer, if you would join me. Dear God, we are grateful for this day, for all the many blessings that you give to us, both seen and unseen. I'm grateful for these um, faithful stewards of their churches that have come to learn more about the changes to the insurance program and how they can uh, best prepare their um, location for um, continued ministry in this world. We know that the work that you call us to do is not easy, but oh so important. We ask that our conversations would glow with your peace and that you would help us have open hearts and minds to learn and hear what we need to this evening. It's in your son's holiest name we pray, amen. All right, I uh, just want to start by saying that uh, property insurance is complicated um, and there's going to be a lot of information given to you tonight. I don't expect you to ingest it all the first time. Certainly it's been a learning curve for me, but um, we will have recordings of this call that will be automatically <laughs> Um, they will be available on our website, and we are going to have a follow-up call that we'll give the date to later in the presentation. You'll get a copy of the slides, which is the million-dollar question in uh, Zoom land, right? Well, when can I get a copy of the slides? So you'll have those. And so um, our goal is just to do as best we can to answer any questions that you might have as you work through this process. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, Tracy, do you want to mute everybody? All right. Um, so let's see, I get, oops, let me get this going. Can you see the PowerPoint slide, Tracy? Yes. Okay. Let me get my slide deck up. Okay, perfect. Um, all right. So Let's see. So this is a review of the insurance program. I've already introduced myself. Um, our agenda for this evening, I think it's always kind of helpful to know where we're going. So we're going to talk about a review of the changes that were made to the program, um, some key dates that you need to know, uh, how to prepare to get a quote, how to find an agent, what to expect from the quote, understanding deductibles, frequently asked questions, and then we'll save time at the end for any questions that you might have. Hopefully you all received the letter in December um, itemizing the changes to the insurance program. Um, I started January 1st of 2021, six weeks, six weeks later, we had the winter storm. And then April 1, 2021 was our first renewal. So since that time, um, well, even before then, but we've been working um, diligently uh, to try with different um, insurance professionals and our insurance advisory team to maintain a comprehensive, sustainable insurance program. Unfortunately, it's just not feasible anymore. You all have experienced the rising deductibles, premiums. We are experiencing extremely hard insurance market. Everyone across the United States is because of the catastrophic losses that we've seen over the last several years, but certainly our loss experience in the North Texas Conference, it makes it more challenging to find a group, a group plan that works for everybody. Um, I jokingly say that um, you don't wanna invite me to your outdoor wedding anymore. Since I've started, we've had two major freezes and a once in a thousand year flood. Both of the last two have taken place in this, um, in this last year. So, um, you know, Weather happens and you know we try to do the best that we can with it. Um, so the changes that were itemized in the letter and a copy of that letter is on our website is that we will no longer have a mandatory comprehensive program as of 331-23. The workers' compensation piece 
will still remain a mandatory piece of the program. Um, you, local churches will really struggle to get uh, adequate coverage and at the low rates that we we're able to provide them. So we felt like this was an important piece of exposure to the local church that we could help them manage in staying in a comprehensive program. Um, some people have asked me, uh, what, what does that cost look like? You know, if you have your most recent bill, the workers' compensation is itemized on that. You know, it's probably this, one of the smallest line items unless you have auto on your pot, um, on your invoice each quarter. So um, the estimates of what that will look like for um, the rest of the year, there might be a slight increase in that policy, but overall we have extremely low losses on that and a really um, strong provider that has um, given us great premium discounts. So um, workers comp will remain. Um, as we mentioned, you'll be billed at, probably in the first of March, we'll be able to estimate what the bills will be for the following quarters. Um, some have asked us if there's an option to stay on the conference insurance plan. There is not. Um, we will uh, be moving to everyone having their own plan come 3-31-2023. And I have to say, um, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out um, what was the best uh, next step for the annual conference. I know that the timing of dropping this information in December right before Christmas was certainly by no means ideal. Um, as I mentioned, we worked with several different providers to try to see if there was a way to keep the plan um, together. Our hope was that we could create something where each individual church had their own policy, could decide their deductible structure, could decide you know, how much they wanted to, uh, in different varying levels of coverage, but we just weren't able to make that happen in a captive plan. Unfortunately, the way our system is set up, our renewal date is 4-1, and we get estimates in December of what the premiums will cost. And uh, But we knew that in December, when we got the information back, that we weren't going to be able to create kind of this individual plan um, that we had to make the choice now um, to, to make these changes. So I apologize for the timing, but we did it as soon as feasibly possible while giving you enough time to make a decision for who you will go with on 401. Some key dates for you to know. Um, our office is trying to do everything we can to equip the local churches to make this change. We know that most of us are not insurance experts or even dabble in it. And so we have, uh, we'll discuss later about three uh, potential providers that you can use. You don't have to use them, but we've had um, extensive conversations with each of them. They understand who we are, they understand who you are, and we have provided those names to you. Um, in this partnership, we have given them the contact information for the local churches. So you should have received something from one of them at least, asking if they can give you a quote. Um, by January 25th, we have asked those providers to get back with us to let us know um, if a church has reached out to them, and then we are keeping track of which churches are reaching out to us to ask questions about loss runs or other various things that we'll talk about in a minute. So on January 25th, we're going to collect all that data and say, okay, I'll, out of all of our churches, we see no um, activity happening at these handful of churches. So we will reach out to your church if you haven't taken any steps yet that we can discern and just double check that you have talked to somebody. Is that a local agent? Is it someone, someone else that we're unaware of? Just to make sure that you've started this process. March 31st feels like a long way away, but it is a short amount of time in the insurance business. So we wanna make sure that you get started today. On, um, as we've mentioned, on March 31st, the program expires. And on April 1st, um, proof of adequate insurance will be required to be sent to the annual conference. Now, there's some caveats to that, and I'll discuss it in one of the further slides. But those are some really important dates for you to kind of um, benchmark against. Here's a suggested timeline. It is by no means set in stone, but just kind of a best practice we would suggest. Call an agent today. If you have not started the process, start the process. 
Um, if you kind of have in your mind that in early February, you'll have agents working on quotes, it can take 15 to 30 days for a quote to come back, especially depending on the size of your church. Larger churches have more exposure and so we'll need more time to get a quote. So you wanna make sure that you start that process um, at least by early February. Quotes should come back at the latest by early March if you're working along this timeline. And then plan to make a decision by March 15th so that you can bind the coverage. Make sure everything is in place um, just in case. There always seems to be more questions that insurance um, agents can ask. And so I, um, having lived through this a few times, um, I would say just you know allow for as much time as possible as you work through this process. I'm going to pause one minute just to see, Tracy, are there any questions about what the timeline that we've talked about or any of the initial pieces? Sure. Uh, a couple of people asked about when the email went out uh, notifying of this. It went out on Saturday, December the 17th. Um, it would have gone to senior pastors and anybody in our database that we have uh, associated with property insurance. Um, if you have specific questions about who at your church that went to, uh, you're welcome to message me or email me after the meeting and I'll get you those answers. We have a couple of other questions, Christy, but I think they might be uh, better answered at maybe towards the end. Okay. Okay, how to prepare to get a quote. Basic information to collect will be the age of your buildings. Any updates you've done to your roof, your wiring, your heating, your plumbing, any of your major systems, any type of repair or uh, maintenance that you've done, you wanna start collecting information about the, those items. If you have a central station alarm, um, information related to the company you use and the phone number that's associated with will help aid the insurance um, quote, uh, the adjuster, not the adjuster, excuse me, the insurance agent and trying to determine, you know, what safe measure you have in place related to your alarm. And then if you have sprinklers in your building, um, they might ask for current flow test. So um, while you can now gather as much information as possible that you know about your building, um, you want to just make sure to show that um, you know, they they assess risk based on what the state of the um, the building is, or the parsonage, or whatever it is that they're insuring. So just try to collect as much of that information as you can ahead of time. It will ease the application process for you. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, what do I need to do um, first? So if you've not already started, I'm probably going to say it 87 times on this webinar. Um, start today. Um, contact uh, Karen at Marsh. Her contact information will be in the next slide, and I think it's been populated in the chat. Um, she is the person at Marsh who is our existing agent that will um, give you the information that you need, and we'll talk specifically about that in the next slide. Um, contact the insurance agents with the options that have been provided or another trusted advisor that you want to seek an, uh, a quote from. And then this step's interesting. I hadn't thought about this previously, but set up meetings with your decision makers to review the process, ask any questions that you might have ahead of time, help gather the information, and set up a timeline to review quotes. You know, this is coming at a busy season for our churches, right? We're about to step into the season of Lent. Easter is, you know, towards the tail end of when this renewal has to happen, spring break, all the things that are going on. So, Gather your decision makers now to talk about, you know, how do we want to go about this? Who do we need a resource to help find the information? Who do we want to get quotes from? And just start the process. And then I would suggest having a date in mind that you're going to gather back together to review the quotes because inevitably you'll have additional questions about what does this coverage mean? What does that part mean? And, you know, any of the agents that you work with should be able to uh, make time to answer questions and help guide you in the decision making process. Specifically from Marsh, our existing agent, you'll want to request um, a church-specific set schedule, which is the summary of all of your exposures, your buildings, your properties, your auto. Um, that will be key to uh, giving that information to whoever's going to give you a quote. The binder or summer, a summary of coverages. Some people will say, hey, I want to see a copy of all my policies. There's really just a short 
uh, I think it's maybe five pages long that shows what the current coverage is under our policy. Um, one thing to note is that your coverages that you're going to be able to get in the local market are going to be different than what you have experienced in the program as a whole. Um, for good reason, you know, we're trying to cover a much larger group of assets than the local church would. So it's not going to be apples to apples comparison. Um, so just keep that in mind. And then the loss history for your particular church will be provided to you that you can pass on to any agent you decide to discuss or talk about with this. A couple of key insurance terms. Um, property is everything listed on the church specific schedule that's pretty um, self explanatory uh, people uh, liability is just the people side slips trips falls. Um, any high employment practices um, just different decisions that are made that interact or affect people in the organization. Directors and officers insurance is um, insurance that every board, whether not for profit or for profit in the world, should have. Um, it's the insurance that protects the decisions of the those in governance. And so this not only protects the pastor, but the leadership, the leaders in the church. So as a board of trustees chair, as a council and finance administration chair, as a treasurer, the decisions that you make should something go awry, you are, you know, a fiduciary steward of those. And the DNO policy is what help helps protect you and in the volunteer role that you serve in. An umbrella or excess liability policy, um, it's, it does what it sounds like. An umbrella sits on top of um, the other policies below it. Um, the GCFA requires that for churches that are 500 members or more, they should also have an umbrella or excess liability policy in place. If you have autos or if you have a daycare, we highly recommend that you have umbrella coverage as well. It's important to be as forthright with the insurance agent that's giving you your quote about the different activities that happen in your church so they can create a plan that serves you best. Um, auto, I mean, that's self-explanatory. We all probably drive cars and have auto insurance. And then the workers comp um, protects from um, any injuries on the job. Um, and we spoke, you know, that's still a mandatory piece of this program. One thing I wanna say is, um, we mentioned that the GCFA standards are required um, level of coverage that each church should be at. Uh, it's not just something that the North Texas Conference feels is a best practice. The Book of Discipline actually says that the Board of Trustees are entrusted with the responsibility to ensure that the church is um, adequately protected um, from loss on insurance um, to the standard that is set by the General Council on Finance and Administration. And so we are following the discipline by saying that this is the, the guideline or measurement that we will um, ask our churches to do the same with. Those um, guidelines are uh, reevaluated every year. And so um, they're, the most recent ones are available for you to um, use. <clears throat> One other um, line of insurance that you might want to consider is cyber insurance. Um, we have not been able to offer it in our comprehensive plan just based on the complex nature of all of our churches and their individual environments. But as we all know how the world works, this is a, becoming a much more critical form of insurance to carry. So, so make sure to ask your um, insurance agent that you go to quote from about um, what that coverage could look like. Okay, um, how to find an agent. So in our letter, we gave you three possible solutions. You're of course welcome to use whichever agent you um, choose. Um, the first one is the American Church Group. They are an approved provider by the North Texas Conference. Uh, we received their name from actually the Great Plains Conference. Um, Rights has a comprehensive insurance program and American Church Group writes for several different conferences across the country. It was our hope that they um, could create a program for us that would allow to have the individual um, church program that I was mentioning. We, we weren't able to pull it off, but um, they primarily write their insurance through Brotherhood. And so um, 
that's why they're selected to be on the list is that we'd had conversations about them taking on the master program. Marsh McLennan, um, you should be very aware of, they have been our current provider for the last 10 years or more. Um, Sovereign Insurance Group is um, the exclusive program manager for the United Methodist Insurance Program. The General Council on Finance and Administration has many different lanes that they help church and resource, uh, they help resource churches with. One of them is insurance. And so um, recently Sovereign was named as the preferred program manager at, and kind of endorsed by the GCFA through the United Methodist Insurance Program. They have um, relationships with several other conferences that have comprehensive programs or just individual churches as well. So they, you know, for decades, they've been working with United Methodist churches and understand who we are, big and small. And so, um, <coughs> excuse me, they've been um, added as a potential provider as well. As I mentioned, um, you are more than welcome to go to another agent. A couple of things I just want to mention is that you make sure and check references of who you use, just like any other business decision that you would make. It's helpful if you can find someone that has experience in the church or not-for-profit space, just because you have unique concerns and unique um, flow of individuals coming in and out of your space that maybe a traditional business wouldn't have. Um, I always say this to everyone about church work, don't hire someone you can't fire. Um, it's challenging in churches to sometimes hire our friends or our neighbors or whatnot and then get into a sticky situation. So uh, just make sure that you know whomever you hire you just feel like if, if it goes south, you, you aren't encumbered to stay with them forever. So, um, and always best practice is to obtain multiple quotes, just like any other business decision you would make. Um, and since we have provided these three, you should be able to receive, you know, multiple quotes from those three. And then if you want to use another outside agent to give a quote as well, you know, totally up to you or three outside agents, it's, it's your choice. Um, I do want to caution you that not all agents and insurance groups are created equally, just like any other industry. If your church has a poor loss history, your option might be a policy. Your only option might be a policy that has language around minimum premium earned or minimum and deposit. So what does that mean? Let's say that you... Um, go through this process, you get a rate that you're not crazy about, but you know that you need to have insurance coverage. And then two months later, you have another agent that approaches you and says, hey, I think that I can get you a better deal. They offer you a better deal and you decide to jump ship. Well, depending on the language of the policy that was written, you might be stuck with that, with paying a hefty burden to leave. So you might have to earn 25% of the premium before you can make a change and get a um, get released from it. Sometimes there are hefty deposits that have to be that, that are non-refundable. So you just need to make sure that you read the fine print and you understand what it is that the policy is saying. Um, and so I would ask questions like that, you know. What happens if we decide to leave the policy early? You know, what are there? What are the questions? My favorite question anytime is, what are the questions I'm not asking, or what are the things I don't know to ask? And so, that I always find is a helpful tool when trying to make decisions in areas where I don't feel like I have all the expertise to to know what I'm looking for. And I will say that, you know, the three providers that we have given you, you know, know who we are, know what we're trying to accomplish and, and know the unique landscape that churches are in, especially with all the things going on. So I would not anticipate having to be worried about that last, the second bullet point with one of the three of them, because, you know, we've, we've had a really good relationship with all of them. What to expect from the quote? So. <clears throat> Excuse me. Valuation is going to be an issue. Um, the average cost per square foot in the program is currently very low. Um, in some comprehensive programs, conferences will require that every three years or five years, a evaluation is done of the church to increase the property values. In our conference, that hasn't been the case. And for really since I got here day one, our existing agent has said, you know, our coverages, our valuations of our church buildings are too low. So um, what some churches will experience, a lot of it is based on not only that because we are undervalued, but 
the supply chain issues, the raw material costs that have been going sky high, the cost of labor going sky high. I mean, we all know how much it is uh, the increase in trying to build a house <clears throat> over the past couple of years. This is um, going to be a direct impact on the value of your property as well. So some of you might experience a 20 to 25 percent increase in value. Now, that's not a dollar for dollar increase on how much more your premium will be. Uh, one of the insurance brokers actually told me that the closer you are to an appropriate value for your church building, should it need, should it experience a loss, actually can help you on the premium side because the um, the insurance um, company knows that it's not taking so much risk on should a loss occur. occur. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, there are two important terms when it comes to property insurance. There's RCV and there's ACV. So RCV is the replacement cash value. This is the preferred property insurance to get, but it is really hard in this challenging market. Um, so oftentimes, and in the last couple of years, we have had to get um, uh, just the ACV coverage. So um, what that means is, um, let's say your church building is worth $2 million at full replacement value to replace the church's $2 million. But um, on the actual cash value, maybe your church is 25 years old and it's depreciated some and it's really um, the value of it is only 1.7 million. So the, the insurance will pay at that amount, not at the higher amount. It's, you know, you don't need to concern yourself so much with these little details, but I want to be able to explain to for you to understand that there is a difference between replacement cash value and actual cash value. <clears throat> Oops. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Um, so on your claims history and your general care. So be your own advocate in this process. Don't be afraid to share the good news. So I know that when we say that we have a, um, you know, a lot of our churches, um, 65 of them went through the winter storm and had a loss, um, you know, that might and we talk a lot about how losses impact our ability to get insurance that's affordable moving forward. But the flip side of that is you had a loss, you did the appropriate repairs, and now whatever was broken is fixed. It's newer, right? So um, don't be afraid to tell the story of, okay, well, this this whole half of our church has been renovated because of the loss. And, you know, that is a good story to tell. It's not just about, you know, the loss isn't great, but there's still good information to share. Um, another key part is how is your church focusing on maintaining good care and fixing minor issues before they become major repairs? So let's say that your church did have a loss during the winter freeze and it was because you know the pipes weren't properly insulated and since that time you have gone through and made sure that um, everything was insulated properly or maybe you've just done something like every month we're going to walk the building and check to see if um, you know how the shingle not every month you wouldn't get on the roof to check the shingles but you know, just walking the building, looking through all the classrooms, making sure that you're finding leaks, you know, you're just do, or maybe even every quarter, anything that you're doing to help maintain the property is going to be to your favor when you come to um, your uh, insurance quote. Sometimes we feel like the insurance agent is, you know, I'm trying to like push against that person, but really the insurance agent is your advocate to the insurance company that's going to write the policy. So, you know, it should be seen more as a collaborative partnership where you're saying, okay, like these are the things we're working on and doing. What else can we be doing to show that we are being good stewards of our resources and of our property? Um, this will go a long way for helping your premiums. Excuse me. So, <clears throat> Make sure that you, um, one thing I do want to say, and I don't know if you're like me, but I would think like, oh, I got to put all these plans in place. I have to do all these things before I get my quote um, for insurance. That's not the case. Start today, start the process, and then your team needs to be thinking about, okay, how can we be advocates and, and make sure that we're taking good care of our, our stuff moving forward? <clears throat> A few notes for larger churches. 
Um, talk to your agent about a wind tail deductible buy down. We have a couple of slides to select, um, select um, sorry, specifically towards deductible um, explanation. So I'll get to those in a minute, but um, so that'll be a key thing for large churches. Um, sexual abuse coverage, um, it, for the larger churches, they're gonna be lengthy applications and you wanna make sure that you're familiar with background checks, ongoing training and any manuals that you're using. All the major carriers will require that you have these things in place. Um, for any of our churches, of course, this is of critical concern and care as we have our um, people in our buildings. So you wanna make sure that you um, think about how you're implementing and, and using um, those resources to help protect those that, that come to your church each week. And then um, inspections. So <clears throat> the larger churches should be prepared for the insurance company to do an in-person visit or an inspection. You want to give yourself plenty of time to do this. I will tell you that the American Insurance Group that writes with Brotherhood <clears throat> is committed to coming to each church that asks to uh, for a quote as they have time available. So it doesn't matter if you're a giant church or a small church. Um, if you ask for the American Insurance Group to um, give a quote, they will want to do an in on-site inspection. So make sure that you do that sooner, get that scheduled sooner rather than later. Okay, understanding deductibles. <clears throat> So there's two different types of deductibles. Um, there's the wind hail and then there's the all other peril. Wind hail makes sense. It's whenever we have a terrible storm, tornadoes, um, that is wind hail, obviously. Um, the amount that you pay is usually based on your total insured value. So how do you calculate total insured value? It's your square footage times uh, whatever number, whatever the, uh, the cost to replace it would be. So um, currently the conference policy uh, wind hail is half of 1% of your total insured value. Um, the market is the industry standard, a low rate is 2%. So you just need to be aware of that difference between our current program and what you might find on the market. Um, <clears throat> an important question to ask is, are your buildings um, going to be charged separately or are they going to be under one deductible? In our program, because of how we are built, um, we weren't able to separate different buildings with different deductibles, but <clears throat> that's an important question to ask. Like how will my building or my property be treated if there is a loss? Is there a different deductible for this building versus that one? It's kind of a <clears throat> unique situation by church, but I would ask it. Um, the other uh, type of deductible is all other peril. So if there's a flood, if a pipe burst, you know, if somebody runs into the side of your building, which has actually happened to one of our churches, that is considered all other peril. And there's sometimes a different deductible for that. It's traditionally much, much lower than your wind hail deductible will be. Part of what, this is my dorky insurance fact of the day, is that part of the what was so detrimental about the winter storm um, in February of 21 was that it was considered an all other peril loss because the lack of power, pipes were bursting, things were flooding. And because those deductibles were so much lower than what the wind hail deductible would have been if it had been treated as that type of loss, the insurance industry lost so much more money than it would have if it had been <clears throat> wind hail that caused the loss because there would have been uh, less of a gap between what they were charging as a deductible and the actual losses that were sustained. So there's your geeky insurance fact for the day. Um, just want you to make sure that you understand what um, the deductibles mean for your church if you have a loss. Ask the questions. If a pipe bursts, what's my deductible? If a, um, a tornado runs through, what's my deductible? If I just have a storm or a hail event, which we know we have so many of them in North Texas, what would my deductible be in that case? Now, I will tell you, not all of the quotes that we're seeing come back from the three provided carriers are based on a percentage of total insured value. Um, so we're seeing lower deductibles that I'll talk about in the next slide. So as I mentioned, buy downs are sometimes available. So let's say that you're at a bigger church and the, um, the deductible rate that you're receiving is 5% of TIV or 4% of TIV um, on wind hail. 
a local church can make the choice to say, you know what, I really can't sustain paying 4% of my total insured value if I have a loss. So I want to buy that down to 2%. Now you're paying premium dollars in between that 4% and 2%. So it's a decision that the local church has to make. Am I, do I want to spend that money um, to reduce my risk or do I want to keep it at the higher threshold? So I just want to throw that industry term out there in case um, that's something that you want to ask about. Um, another thing to think about is if you, um, let's say that your quote comes in and you got a, you get a really low deductible and you're like, you know what, uh, my deductible came in at $2,000, but I know that we have trustee reserves of like $10,000. And so I'm going to ask the question, if my deductible goes up to $5,000 or $10,000, uh, what does that do to my premium? Now, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, right? But it might be that if you increase the deductible that you're willing to pay at the loss, it will reduce your premiums and that makes sense for your church. You can just, you know, roll the dice, take the risk. So those are the different types of um, <clears throat> leadership decisions that questions you should ask, decisions that you can make. <clears throat> and I will say, one of our churches has been through the process, excuse me, and they received a really low deductible. Their um, total insured value is like two and a half million and their deductible because they've had a good loss run <clears throat> and had some recent repairs to the church, um, their deductible is a thousand dollars if they have a loss. So they don't have a percentage wind tail deductible. If you find yourself in that spot, I am so excited for you. But you want to start saving today for when the market shifts again or the church experiences a loss. I would encourage you to aim to save one to two percent of your total insured value and start building up that piggy bank for literally a rainy day. Because if you experience a loss in a premium year, the next year your stretch, your uh, just like anything, the costs will go up, and then your deductible structure might change. You know that's what we experienced in the insurance program. Was after several years of loss consecutively, we had a jump from 2.5 million of first dollar of loss to 3.8, from a deductible of 25,000 to 50,000 per event, and then you know much more if after we did the first dollar of loss. So just because it's been the way it was doesn't mean it's going to stay. So you need to make sure that you start saving if you if you find yourself in that kind of situation. And this, uh, this church that I'm talking about also saw a dramatic decrease in their total premiums compared to what they would be staying in the plan. So I can't guarantee all churches will have such great luck, but you know we have been hearing some good stories from the field about what people are finding. So frequently asked questions, what will I need after March 31st, 23? You'll need comprehensive property and liability insurance that meets the GCFA standards. You will need additional documentation if you decide to use one of the three uh, providers that we've given you, you don't have to do anything else. If you bind a policy with them, they will notify us that the policy in, is in place and there's nothing else for you to do. If you do not choose one of them, which is 100% within your rights to do, uh, you will need to provide proof of adequate coverage by April 1st, 2023. And we'll send information out about what <clears throat> you specifically need to do to um, prove that, that coverage. And then again, the workers' compensation inference will remain a shared program in the annual conference. So I'm going to pause right there and see what questions we have. Okay, Christy, um, a couple that we have had come in and some that have come in uh, from this morning session, um, one of which is, can we bind coverage before April 1st? We cannot bind coverage before April 1st. We're in a, a, a captive mandatory program, so we, the earliest we could do it is April 1st. But I will tell you that um, usually insurance quotes only last about 30 to 45 days. And the carriers that we have, or excuse me, the agents that we've recommended have all said that, you know, if you're given a quote now, it will be good with an effective date of April 1. Okay, thank you. Um, one person asked if small churches could get together and 
somehow get a policy as a group, some sort of a joint policy? Uh, I would explore it. I don't I don't know enough to say yes or no. My thought would be no, only because uh, you have to be the owner of the property to have insurance for it. And if multiple churches got together, there would be multiple owners. So I don't think the industry would allow it. But I always say there's no bad questions. So see what um, see what you can find. Okay, and somebody asked a question related to the additional insured, uh, both understanding what that means and then what what does that uh, what does that look like for their church? Sure, it's a great question. So there's two different types of um, write-ins that you can do. You can do additional named insured, which, or you can do additional insured. So we are asking churches to do the lesser of the two and just put additional insured. What that means is if it's, it's going to be on a liability claim, you know, if something happens and your church is sued and the annual conference is also named as sued as well, that policy would cover the annual conference as well. Now, not exclusively, but our, we have policies in place that pr would protect the annual conference if we are sued in such a manner. But we, were re we received guidance from the insurance professionals that are both on our advisory team and the agents that we work with that this is a good step for churches to take because we live in a connectional environment. Uh, it protects both the local church and the annual conference. And, you know, when we think about our connectional system. It's not just um, what benefits the annual conference that, you know, if a local church is sued and, you know, there's a sending liability to conference and there's a huge settlement, of course, that goes back out to the churches as well. So this is kind of a, an extra layer of protection that uh, in our connectional system. All right, we have, uh, let's see, there, there's a question related to the coverage period. Um, the fact that our policy runs April to April, but that we just billed the first quarter of 2023. Um, the question is that they thought they had paid the first quarter invoice already when they prepaid the premium uh, last January. So um, the, the the timing of it is um, we guesstimate what we think we will see uh, in the renewal in April by doing the payment cycle starting January 1st, but it, that doesn't cover all of the premiums of the entire policy year. So we, we instead of, you know, churches budget uh, as of 1 1 to 12 31. And so the decision was made long before I was here that the renewal date would be 4-1 and that we would guesstimate and hope for the best when we're charging years on uh, churches on a 12-month basis, but it doesn't mean that all the premiums were paid with all of the dollars received by 12-31. We still had one more quarter that needed to be paid. Okay, and the next question has to do with um, scout groups. Uh, the question specifically is, if scout groups still meet at our church and we have signed the partnership agreement, they are securing their own insurance, correct? They aren't included in our umbrella. So that's a great question. Um, the changes to the different agreements between um, organizations that host uh, Boy Scouts, uh, Boy Scout groups, BSA groups, um, provides additional insurance than it did previously. And so we have advised churches that they either need to do an affiliation agreement or a facility use agreement, but not a charter agreement because that doesn't provide enough separation between the church and the BSA organization. So um, there is insurance coverage by the BSA to the groups, but you would need to talk specifically to whomever you get a quote from to ask what the appropriate level of insurance should be for your church that hosts that group. So I can't say definitively. I think it's one of those things that, you know, if you have charter organizations, if you have daycares, if you have other, you know, facility use agreements where there's extensive use of your, um, your uh, church by minors, these are all things that you want to bring up to the insurance agents when you're getting quotes. 
Okay, and then somebody asks, are ACG and Sovereign really equipped to deal with the incoming quote requests? Um, to varying degrees. So ACG is um, has said that they can handle part of our book of business, but not the entire book of business. And so that's why it's important to start early and often be in contact with them <clears throat> to see if they can come out and do, because they require an on-site inspection of your church that limited, limits the amount of churches they can get to before a 4-1 renewal. Um, Sovereign has full capacity to take on as many quotes as they can be sent. And March is the same. I guess the last question was really when the slide deck was going to be emailed out to everybody. I'll email that out tomorrow morning um, along with um, or actually, Chrissy, I'll let you touch base on the, the next meeting. So I think that's on a subsequent slide. Okay. Any other questions before we do key takeaways and? Uh, okay, so there's, um, there's a question related to um, what is meant by mandatory when it comes to the workers' compensation policy? Um, uh, I'm not sure I fully understand the question, but the work, Christy, the workers' compensation will continue as a shared mandatory program through the conference, correct? Yes. David, I'm not sure if that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, it does. I was just, it was just confusing because we said insurance was mandatory and then we have a mandatory workman's comp program. I'm trying to figure out what the differences were, but I get it now. It's like a deck of cards. You have different ones that play different uh, different games, right? So the workers' comp is the one that is going to continue shared, but you're building this book of insurance with auto and general and DNO and and all that. So when we go shopping for insurance, should we tell them to exclude workers' comp because we already have that coverage? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. And that letter on the website actually lists our policy number and uh, the information you need so they can have what they need to show that that is part of the bound coverage if they need it. They probably don't, but um, Texas is um, kind of a unique state in how they do workers' comp. And so that was really another deciding factor is that it's really gonna be challenging for churches to, to navigate all of that. And the prices are so good for what we can offer in the shared program. Okay, thank you. Sure. I'm gonna go um, finish up. <clears throat> Excuse me. So key takeaways, make sure you start today shop around, ask questions, set up meetings with your leaders to review the policy. I know this feels overwhelming. Um, we're here to be your resource to help you as best we can. Uh, we have put the link to our direct uh, website page that has property insurance so you can find all the resources. And we will be hosting another follow-up Zoom on Tuesday, February the 7th in the same manner, having a 10 a.m. call and a 6 p.m. call. You can attend either of them. If you're not able to attend live, you can sign up for them and the recording will automatically be sent to you. So. That's all we have for this evening. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you, much appreciated.